Have you also got a lot of media players? Well, if you do, there are a couple of ways, and we will be looking at one of the ways on how you can group them today in Home Assistant. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Before we start with today's video, I really would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and have become YouTube channel members. Thank you for all of your support so far. And also thanks to everybody who watched, subscribed or liked my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below. Now let's start with today's video. This here is a list of media players, and not all of them are media players per se. Some of them are groups. How I used to previously create groups was, of course, go to Google Home app, and there I would click my way and create a group depending on what type of group I wanted to create. It can be either, for example, kids group, or based on the floors or something else. But yeah, managing groups in one app, then using them in the other app can be a little bit confusing. But first, let's talk about why would you need media player groups. There are a couple of reasons, but since media player groups in Home Assistant are not synced, meaning that if you push multiple sounds to multiple speakers, they will not start at the same time, you would not get a very nice experience of listening to music. Where the media player groups shine in Home Assistant is pushing notification. For example, one of the notifications that my kids receive every day is their tasks, what each of them should do today. And I do that by creating a fake notify group. But the other way of doing it is to create a media player group. That way each of the media players in my kids' rooms will play that text-to-speech message. Remember that even if you create media player group, you can still access and control media players individually. So let's get started with media player groups. First, let's start our editor. I will be using Visual Studio Code, but you can use any editor you normally use to edit your YAML files. Since there are a couple of ways on how you can handle your configuration YAML files, I will be here using default setting of putting it inside the configuration YAML file. If you've previously created any media player inside configuration file, then you will put it underneath. I already have MB, so I will be just adding a new media player here, or media player group. We will be using platform group. And the only other mandatory variable here is entities where you need to provide lists, so multiple media players. Let me quickly copy the media players I will be having in this group. And this is it. But I really do recommend that you add at least one, if not both of the following variables. The first one will be name. If you do not specify the name variable, the group name will be media group. And you do not want to have media group one, media group two, etc. You want to have nice friendly names. So we will be adding name here. This one will be called Kids Media Players. Since I want to be able to distinguish what players are inside the group by the group name. And the other variable that you need to add here is the unique ID. And I do recommend that whenever you can, you add unique ID. Not all platforms or integrations support unique ID, but this one does. And unique ID for this will be the same as the name. Kids Media Players. And this is it. If you want to add or create additional media groups, you just copy Add Media Players to your liking. For example, Media Player dot lock me and I will call this group upstairs media players because these are the media players on this floor. You can of course mix and match. 
Since this works with any media player, you can use both Amazon, Google or other devices that you can add to Home Assistant. This is also one of the benefits of using media player groups instead of grouping them in, for example, Google Home app. Next thing, of course, whenever you change something by hand, go to Configuration, Server Controls, check Configuration, and if everything is OK, restart your Home Assistant. After restart, if we go to Developer Tools and filter Entities by Media, we should see two new media players, one named Kids Media Players and the other one Upper Floor, well, Upstairs Media Player. Upper Floor is the group that I've created in Google Home app. So this media player, called Kids Media Player, is off and it has following entities inside, whatever, me, and mini me, while the upstairs media player has those two and the clock me as a third media player. So what can you do with those media players? As I said, if you try and push music to them, they will not start at the exact same time, so the speakers are not synced. But what this is great for is to send text notifications. Yes, as I mentioned previously, you can also use the Notify group and create notification platform out of media player and then group them together. But this one is much nicer because it is keeping all the attributes of the media players. Let's test it. Let's go to Services, Kids, Media Players. We'll be using text to speech. Let's type message and let's call the service. And the text message has been spoken. Let's try with this one. Upstairs media player. Subscribe. Yep, and it's working on all three speakers at the same time. Since the first message that I've sent has waken up the two speakers and I have changed the volume in between, when I press the call to service, don't forget to subscribe. It looks like all three speakers played the message at the same time. Well, there was a little bit of delay on one of the speakers. And this is it for this very brief Home Assistant How-To with Bearded Thinker. I really do hope that you did find this video useful and that you will be implementing media player groups in your system. If you have any wish for future videos or have any idea or a comment, you can always try and leave the comment down in the comment section below. But please note that unfortunately still YouTube comments go missing. And no, I didn't delete any of them. They just vanish. So if you want to make sure, either post it and then revisit the page to see if the comment is still there, or it's easier to jump to the Discord server and leave message on the Discord server. If you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up, because it not just means a lot to me, but it helps with the YouTube algorithms. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified in the future with updates and streams, and I have something special coming for the next stream. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.